everyone. Hope you are all doing good. We are all fine here. So hopefully brighter and better days are coming ahead. Well, today's topic is digital feminism. See, at the growth of the World Wide Web during the 1990s, the feminist movement found a new way of expressing itself, thereby laying the foundations of digital feminism. So here, we could see that the digital mode is on and at this juncture, I would like to explain the definitions of three terms. What are those? Digital feminism, cyber feminism and network feminism. Right. So digital feminism can be defined as an activism or engagement with feminism and feminist ideologies on the internet. In other words, digital feminism is feminism that takes place in the online realm. And what about cyber feminism? So it is also a feminist approach which foregrounds the relationship between cyberspace, the internet and technology. The term was coined in the early 1990s to describe the work of feminists interested in theorizing, critiquing, exploring and remaking the internet, cyberspace and new media technologies in general. And what about networked feminism? Network feminism is a phenomenon that can be described as the online mobilization and coordination of feminists in response to perceived sexist, misogynistic, racist and other discriminatory acts against minority groups. This phenomenon covers all possible definitions of what feminist movements may entail as there have been multiple waves of feminist movements. So, feminism goes digital. So, uh, online journals, websites and blogs are the various areas that contemporary feminists developed in response to the need for a public platform to voice themselves. Young women voicing their opinions about the state of the world around them possibly, possibly paved way for digital feminism. So what is the role of technology in digital feminism? So digital revolution or advancement in technology provides an opportunity to be inclusive. Tools like blogging and social media have led to the democratization of the feminist movement. So it provides regular accessibility. It encourages diversity. So blogging and social media on the whole allows for the swift dissemination of knowledge and information across borders. It enables transnational feminist networks across the globe. So this is actually a mutual learning process. So feminist community building in online platforms involves sharing personal stories, making alliances through comments, raising awareness about solutions and questioning gender stereotypes. So on the whole, it is going to be a mutual learning process. So democratizing feminist movements, recording your feminine condition. So now the internet seems to be a promising new avenue. So according to the feminist activist Faith Wilding, there is a tendency through among many cyber feminists to indulge techno-utopian expectations that the new e-media will offer women a fresh start to create new languages, programs, platforms, images, fluid identities and multi-subject definitions in cyberspace that in fact women can record redesign and reprogram information technology 
to help change the feminine condition. So now the contemporary digital feminist activists, they are recoding, redesigning and reprogramming the information technology to bring up a change in the feminine condition. So digital activism can mobilize a large number of people within minutes. It is far quicker than offline activism. It fosters an interactive approach. Diverse groups of people can participate through online blogs and petitions and articles can be very fastly be shared with others. So this is going to be a boon for the third world women. So historically, feminism has been viewed within a restricted Western lens. It was kept apart from the third world women. So the third world women who were seen as powerless or uh, those belonging to a victimized group when compared to liberated Western feminists. So now women of different nationalities, races, classes and cultures gain digital access. So the digital feminist discourse is expanding thereby it includes the voices of those who have previously been excluded. It promotes a postmodernist and postcolonial perspective of feminism. It acknowledges diversity in the movement. It accepts multiple truths, roles and realities. So it lets marginal groups of women reconceptualize feminism based on their own experiences and beliefs. So social media allows marginalized voices the possibility of being heard in the public domain or discourse. So we are not the same. So the things aren't getting better in certain communities. So a Facebook page accomplished by Dalit women highlights the importance of identifying the unequal caste structure that exists in feminist discourses and academia. It stresses that there are linkages between caste and patriarchy and that even the Me Too movement will be invalid for Dalit women unless intersectional marginalities are acknowledged. So note this, Western feminists focus only on their own value system. They view themselves as saviors for other women, but they fail to realize that the women across the world do not necessarily share the same conditions of discrimination as women in Western countries. So there comes a digital disparity. Digital feminist activity can be exclusionist if dominant cultures and languages select who can be heard, included and seen in the movement. So this matters a lot. Disparity in internet access within geographical locations and socio-economic class structure will be indeed a barrier in reaching out to the excluded masses. So, not this point. Prior to the digital era, global feminist movements were largely shaped by academic discourses alone. So, although Academia continues to form the backbone of most movements. Cyber feminism has paved a new path for feminist activism. So this closing online. So the Everyday Sexism Project, it was an online initiative launched in 2012 by British feminist writer Laura Bates. Uh, it was one of many online movements that marked the beginning of the fourth wave of feminism. It encouraged tens of thousands of women around the world to write about their 
the sexual harassment experiences, workplace discrimination, body shaming that they encounter in their everyday life. So all these issues were disclosed online. Now comes the hashtag culture in India. Fourth wave feminism is in its budding stage in India. Women are using digital tools to demand accountability from their governments, corporations and leaders. So in India, digital feminist movements largely rely on social media platforms. The Nirbhaya movement of 2012 so hashtags like uh, Delhi Braveheart were used by millions of people in support of justice for the victim. It garnered global attention and it compelled the government to take quick action. As a result, India's rape laws were amended to enlarge the definition of rape. So the concept of rape was expanded. The punishment for rape convicts were revised to a prolonged life term and even to death penalty. So fast track courts were also made available. Stringent punishments were determined for offenses like acid attacks, stacking and voyeurism. In 2017, the Lagan hashtag on Twitter to campaign against the 12% tax on sanitary napkins the period tax was being scrapped in 2018 as a result of the movement. So you could understand how the hashtag culture in India has led the feminists to more empowerment. The why loiter hashtag. The Delhi rape incident questioned women's safety in public places. So feminist socialist Shilpa Patke in her work Why Loiter presented that the act of loitering is more prevalent among men while women are rarely alone in public play spaces like parks and beaches. So this culminated in 2017, the why loiter hashtag which was trending in Twitter. Women posted uh, pictures and stories reclaiming public spaces, creating the narrative uh, resisting male domination and patriarchy in the physical as well as the virtual spaces. So now comes the Me Too movement. It was led by the American activist Tarana Burke who gained worldwide popularity through Twitter in 2017. By 2018, the uh, in 2018, the Me Too movement gained momentum in India too. So it enabled women to share their stories of sexual harassment on social media. It led to activists effectively uh, petitioning the government to strengthen the sexual harassment of women at workplace, uh, which previously had many weaknesses. So the act was revised as a result of these online movements. So the internet is a safe space to vent against a repressive gender regime in the offline world. It's on us. So this is another hashtag movement uh, initiated by the former US President Barack Obama's National Initiative Against Sexual Assaults. In 2014, the now former president, uh, Barack Obama, launched an It's On Us initiative. It was a campaign that was aimed to bring awareness to the events of sexual assault across America and put an end to it. The initiative asks everyone, everyone to make commitment and become a part of the national fight against the sexual assault. So... You Ocasis hashtag is another movement that addresses street harassment cases. Feminist Jones, an activist and a social worker as well as a blogger, she created 
a digital campaign to tackle the problem under the hashtag UOCases. Uh, it was uh, begun to center the conversation around women of color who often feel like their experiences are not highlighted too much. The idea for the hashtag came to Jones when one day she saw a young mother pushing a stroller with a newborn and asked her, are you okay sis? So from that point on, the movement has received many supporters across social media channels and especially Twitter. Digital divide. The cyber feminism cannot be viewed as a remedy for universal claim of gender equality. Uh, the issue of digital divide continues to be a challenge for cyber feminism. The gap between the haves and the have-nots to digital access, uh, I mean the digital devices and internet, is increasing. Uh, the, uh, it creates a rupture in the idea of a universal uh, cyber feminist movement. India still has a long way to go for democratic online feminism to function independent offline uh, activism. So narrowing the existing digital divide can play a crucial role in increasing the participation of marginalized women. So uh, at this juncture, we should also look up at the digital hatred that uh, hails from the online culture. Digital misogyny, uh, misogyny in the form of hate, hate speech physical threats and obscene language have a deep impact on women's uh, voices online. It results in self-censoring, assuming an anonymous identity or withdrawing from online domains together. So online abuse is going to be a crucial, it, it, it is uh, going to cause a crucial impact in the mind of uh, teenagers especially young women. So online abuse linked to domestic violence against women. According to a research, 38% of women have been stalked online after they had left their partners. Such data indicates that the internet, is, uh, internet not only allows violent ex-partners to use it as another tool to abuse women, but also to incite others to join in their attacks. Technology thus enables the continuation of assault beyond the scope of physical space. So, however, this is going to be a new avenue for contemporary feminists. Cyber feminism is in many ways a direct response to the toxic offline and online space. A way through which the patri it is a way through which the patriarchal cycle can be broken. Speaking publicly about gender issues offers women the benefits of catharsis, I mean, uh, to release their emotional tension. The call-out culture focuses on micro-rebellions worldwide. Uh, so it uh, pays way for varied voices to emerge. And it is a new avenue for global feminist networking. This internet offers a safe space and a way to not just share common experiences, but also to organize and resist repressive gender regimes. So, digitalizing feminism. So, uh, this allows, feminism, when it gets digitalized, allows for wider feminist discussions. It overcomes spatial limitations. It redefines what activism and social movements can look like. It provides an outlet for new opportunities for the empowerment of other marginalized women. In 2013, acid attack survivor Lakshmi Agarwal gathered around 27,000 signatures through an online petition to stop acid sale. To, to curb the sales of acid and uh, took the issue to the Supreme Court. Look at the power of online petitions. The campaign gained nationwide attention. It allowed several other acid attack survivors to voice their support for the ban on acid sale. 
the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the plea and introduced restrictions on the sale of asset and recognized it as a crime under Section 326 of the Indian Penal Code. So, why digital feminist activism? Through the use of technology as a, a powerful tool of resistance and activism, women and persons of other marginalized genders continue to help contemporary feminism evolve into a more inclusive, multidimensional and pro-intersectional movement. Digital spaces are not end goals but are means to further the agenda of making feminist resistance more inclusive and or transparent which is indeed the need of the hour so now uh, the source is from Shruti Jain's article the rising fourth wave feminist activism on digital platforms in India so it is important that digital activists do not become absorbed into a virtual vacuum that is disconnected from the physical world of activism there is a powerful world of grassroots activism that is being undertaken by courageous individuals across the globe whose stories are never captured. Moreover, there are many marginalized and vulnerable people living in abject poverty and conflict that don't have access to a digital world uh, in order to highlight their plight and fight for, for their rights. So in addition, approximately 41% of the global population still do not have regular access to the internet and illustrating the limited reach of digital activism campaigns like Me Too in other communities. Grassroots physical activism is vital in fighting for the rights of the most vulnerable global citizens and must not be forgotten. So with this note, this is Wahida signing off. Thank you so much for listening patiently and those who haven't subscribed it, do subscribe and uh, please press the bell icon for further updates. Thank you.